Welcome, Peace Corps Panama trainees. You have made it to Panama and are embarking on one of the most amazing and challenging experiences of your life. We hope that you have arrived motivated to learn and ready to get your hands dirty. The training team has worked hard to determine the most important cultural and technical training material to better prepare you for the service ahead. Successfully integrating during your first three months at site can help you understand your community's needs, help you to feel comfortable and safe in your new home, and give you the confidence to accomplish your project goals. Today we are going to introduce four important tools to help you successfully integrate into your community and assist you in developing a community analysis, your first task when arriving to site. It is important you become familiar with these tools during training and practice applying them while living in your host community so that you are better prepared to dive right in when you arrive to your new site. PACA stands for Participatory Analysis for Community Action. The tools that make up PACA are community mapping, daily activities, seasonal calendar, needs assessment, and priority ranking. You will use and adapt the appropriate PACA tools to identify your community structure, its resources, gender roles, seasonal routines, and development opportunities. During training, you will be introduced to the steps of community development to help you make appropriate decisions about how to identify projects based on the needs of the community. For example, how do you earn people's confidence in the beginning? How do you find out what people's needs are in the community? How do you adapt PACA tools to a small or large size community? Now let's take a closer look at each tool and how current volunteers use PACA in their communities. Community mapping. The tool that was most effective for me was the community mapping tool. I went around and asked different people where their houses were, where their farms were, where they like to hang out, um, and anything I was missing on the map. And one of the most um, beneficial parts of this was uh, getting people's trust in the community and letting them get to know me on a more personal level. Seasonal calendar. And then I also had this other part for the seasonal calendar, and they're able to tell me all the vegetables they grow and what seasons they are best in and when they can harvest them. And then daily activities. And then with that, I got to ask them their daily schedule all at the same time and so it was very very beneficial needs assessment and priority ranking um, the main pocket tool that we as teaching english volunteers use is the needs assessment needs assessment is great because it gives us an opportunity to go about in the community go about in the schools and talk with a lot of community members about basically what they want to do in general i had a week where teachers were at seminar and therefore i didn't have any english class for that week so I spent my entire week hanging out in the school, having meetings with the directora and subdirectora and other teachers about what they desire for me. Do they want community English classes? What do they think is the best way that their students will learn in the English classroom? Um, obviously, these people weren't English teachers, but they still know the students. They still know the process. They've went through the school system. They have the vast wealth of knowledge, and it's our job as Peace Corps volunteers to tap into that knowledge. Pocket tools look simple in concept. Draw a map, write out a daily schedule, or make a calendar. However, being able to engage and motivate a group to complete an activity, working with them to see what information the tool has revealed, and helping them see how they might use the information requires strong facilitation skills. So one of the challenges is conducting the tools in meaningful ways. For Peace Corps volunteers to be effective, they must be able to communicate with their host country colleagues and community to establish rapport and trust and to listen to what people need and want to do for themselves. To be able to facilitate discussions among groups of people is a critical skill. It is the key to using PACA methodologies effectively.
Hi, my name is Max Metz, and I'm Lorraine Metz. We're a couple living in the Comarca Nobeg Google. And we are from Wisconsin in the United States. The message that we were thinking about trying to give to volunteers about pocket tools, what, what was useful for us is wait three months. Mm -hmm. Wait the three months and use the tools that you have. Use the questions. Take your time. Take the time. Get to know every single person in your community. Get to know the kids. Um, the old people are awesome to talk to, and they have a lot of history that they can tell you about their community. Our methodology was primarily passearing. And in training, you don't get a, a mm -hmm. actual training on how to pass AR. No. You're thinking, great, I just go house to house, and I sit there, and we have a good conversation. Um, but we found it really difficult to get started. The first house, the first pass AR is really hard. Once we got through that, and we had our little small journal, we always kept a tiny pocket journal with mm -hmm. us, and we would take notes the entire time. We'd write down Spanish words that we would look up later like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? Because you're just getting in a country uh -huh. and there's a lot we have to learn. Uh, and then we would go home at night and kind of translate those notes into mm -hmm. what actually happened today. Mm -hmm. um, with that technique, we collected um, a huge journal worth of information. And mm -hmm. that was what we used to create our community analysis. Mm -hmm. And as a couple, it was nice to have two ears listening to the same conversation, um, because sometimes we would hear different things, and we'd have to be we'd have to go back and ask other people how fast they are, and ask the same questions, and be like, what What's really the answer here? And ask the same question five or six times in yes. your community, and different ways too. <laughs> different ways. You'll get different answers. Yeah. Um, we have a bigger community as well. Our community is about um, 1,200 people. Our uh, primary school is over 300 students, 16 teachers, and mm -hmm. so our process really had to be methodic and getting to the different populations, yes. getting to different neighborhoods because mm -hmm. certain populations wouldn't feel connected to us, um, yeah. nor us to them.